Why don't you tell me what you think of Victoria? This to start with, how do you like being here? Well, so far the hotel room is very nice, and uh, as I look out on the street here, it looks absolutely beautiful. Right. But I can see about 45 feet, and what I see looks lovely. So that's the extent of my sightseeing in Victoria. I came in in a cab at night, so I saw some street lights and nothing. How do you find the audience here? Uh, last night at the uh, the first session you did oh, for the... Terrific. It's not like curiosity seekers coming in off the street and like, uh, uh, you know, where they like, so now they start yelling requests, you know, like they're the boss. Right. How do you find uh, the, the kind of crowds that, uh, say, you do in L.A. when you do a jazz concert? Do you find them to be younger, more more to be younger now, yeah, I find more a lot and more? Of squares down there, too. Real squares. In, in what way? What do you mean? Just dumb. You know. Is that right? Stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. Uh, New York, they're much sharper. Is, is oh. that right? Oh, yeah. There's no comparison. Why would there be a difference? Can you... Can you well, I'll tell you the difference between New York and L.A. In New York, they know the difference. That's the difference. In L.A., they don't. They think, they think it's the same. They think uh, Elvis Presley is Bing Crosby. They think it's both, it's both equal. They think it, uh, that John LaFonte is, is just as great as, as Joe Venuti. And they think that uh, Don Menzer is a, is a Zoot Sims. They, can't, they, can't, they equate them. They don't know the difference. In fact, that's where they get the term fool's gold, I think. Is when they come out there and they just say, oh, I think I got it, man. It's just nothing but mud, polished tinsel. I think somebody said when you scrape the tinsel off of Hollywood, you find the real tinsel. But uh, and you, you really find Hollywood oh, to be like a that. bunch of squares. You know? Well, if that's the case, why, why don't you move to New York? Or is it just that well, you like it there? Or? I don't work in... Uh, my income last year in uh, L.A. was $65. Total, grand total income. That's right. See, I work all over the country and all over the world. So that's, that's, a, that's a home base thing. Yeah, a beautiful, I got a nice house. I pay sixty-five dollars a month, or uh, sixty dollars a month. I beg your pardon. Yeah. So that's what I pay for a fully furnished house, two car garage with an automobile, and four television sets and so on. It was left to me by a friend of mine. That's all I pay. Yeah. Plus utilities, you know, cover nothing because I'm never there. Are you married? No. Uh, oh, I couldn't do that. First. No. I, I was about to say, if you're on the road all the time, there must be a considerable, considerable problem as if you were trying to maintain any sort of relationship, with, right? Or well, is there? the first thing is the music on what you like right. to do, what, you, what Herman Wolk always called your natural work. And uh, if you can get into that and do that, you've got to be happy, man. And so guys that are frustrated all their lives doing something they just don't like to do. Compromise, man. Right? Well, yeah, they practice their instrument and the music all these years, and they wound up working on a television show, which has absolutely nothing to do with the music. If it did, they'd make the speaker bigger, you know, instead of the picture. Well, where do you draw the line, though, between, uh, I suppose, making a living and then playing jazz? Is, is there, is there a, a possible... Can you do that? First, you play all the good music you can and hope you make a living at it. That's how I do it. I mean, that's how I do The money has no bearing in my life whatsoever. But you're, ta you're talking about integrity, though, aren't you, really? Well, yeah, the more of it, the better. But there's so little of it that uh, you can find a handful of people with it, and that's who you associate with, if possible. So I have. I found everybody I hang out with: Dick Spivak, Carl Jefferson, Al Julian back in Boston, uh, yeah. uh, Scott Hamilton, oh, yeah. Carl Collins. These people have integrity. Zoot Sims, Dave yeah. McKenna, For sure. and uh, they're legitimate people. But there's a lot of guys in this uh, jazz racket that don't have. You know. And so you just uh, you weed them out. Yeah. So. What are they there for? If they're not for, there for the love of the music? Oh, I think they're there to flex their egos, muscles on the side, I mean, just to show off. Yeah, yeah jazz is attracting an awful lot of unsavory characters. <laughs> Junkies and, and the, what I call the crybabies, you know, and the sissies. And I don't want to be bothered with them. I really don't. I'm a drunk, you know. Would it have been easier 20 years ago for a guy to be a jazz player and 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 then come up through the ranks like like one has, like you have, and be a and making a living as a jazz player, where the young guys now have me more to contend with? Do you think is that a, oh, a thing yeah. or? Young guys are in a lot of trouble. Main yeah. thing is the schools. Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, well, they've got fourth trumpet players in there yeah. that thought they could play, and they're teaching them all straight eight notes and rock and roll, and teaching them electronics. Or the electronics have nothing to do with it, absolutely. Yeah. It's an end result, electronics. Yeah. Electronic, the speaker's not the instrument instead of buying a good instrument. Right. So the schools have got them, and Woody Herman's having a lot of trouble in that direction right is now. That right? Oh, yeah, he gets the guys out of these schools, and all they can do is read straight eight notes. They can't get a feeling, they can't leave any space. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get a decent sound, you know. So, so that'd be the same with drummers, obviously. That'd be a real problem with oh, drummers. Oh, he's got a lot of problems. They can't get a 4-4 guy. Therefore, all his music is written to accommodate the players he's got, rather than write good music and, 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 and uplift the quality of the musician. But unfortunately, what I, I feel, far be it for me to tell him what to do. He's been around so much longer and so much more successful than I am. 
And uh, in fact, he's my boss for many years. He's one of my closest friends. Right. And uh, he's still a big influence on me. Uh, but uh, I think he's making the wrong move at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. I think the thing is shifting now through this year of 1979. Mm-hmm. I think the 80s are going to be a hot swinger, a hot swing. Mm-hmm. If you can't play it, I think you're going to be walking the streets. I feel it. Uh, the company uh, I'm, I'm associated with now, Conk and Jazz, is uh, we've done nothing but that. What they call, what they, for lack of a better word, mainstream, you know. Yeah. But it's just swing music, hot swing music. Right. We got the young people. Norman Grand's got all the sluggers, so we can't get them. We got all the, he got the New York Yankees. Yeah. But we get the Boston Red Sox, I think.